Hello and welcome to my explanation for Veritasium's bullet block experiment question. If you've not seen that video then I suggest that you go and have a look at it now as obviously what I'm about to say will make little sense if you haven't. One other warning, is this video is very dry, it deals with a lot of mathematics and mechanics so don't expect to necessarily have <laughs> a particularly exciting video here. Okay. If you've assuming you're still with me and you've watched the video, as you know, the video poses the question, how come the wooden block which is shot off center rotates and reaches the same height, thus having more total kinetic energy than the system where it is shot in the center when the bullet that hits the block starts off with the same kinetic energy? Now, I've considered this situation and basically my belief um, which I think is quite a common belief is that the what happens in the rotating block is that the there is less energy lost in the bullet impact. Now I could just leave the explanation there. However, I've gone and done a sort of uh, thought experiment based on what I think is happening to show that it is almost certainly the explanation for what for the question posed. So the way I'm going to address this is if you look at the diagrams here I'm showing the bullet the moment before impact. Now what I'm suggesting is happening is that in the rotating block the bullet travels less far in than it does on the one where it doesn't rotate. Now I'm going to refer to this as static and rotating throughout the experiment so static is the one which doesn't rotate rotating is the one that does. I don't know any of the data regarding the weight of the block, how high it goes, the speed of the bullet, the mass of the bullet. So this proof obviously isn't going to be putting in any numbers in. It's just going to deal with, I'm going to use the variables with letters and symbols standing for them. And then the proof at the end of this will show you that one of them has to be greater or less than the other. So what are the variables that we need to consider? Well, first off, there's the mass of the wooden block, which I'm going to refer to as MW. Then there's the acceleration due to gravity, which I'm going to refer to as G, which is fairly common. There's the mass of the bullet, which I'll call MB, and the velocity of the bullet, which is the moment before impact, which is I'll refer to as VB. Now, there are also some other properties following the impact, which we then need to take into account. And obviously these vary depending on the static and rotating blocks. So the first one to consider is the upwards velocity of the block the moment after impact. So this uh, for the static this is VWS and for the rotating it's VWR. We then need to consider the height the block reaches which um, is SWS for the static and SWR for rotating. Then we need to consider which is the main part of this theory is that the distance that the bullet penetrates the block which are called DS and DR. Then there are a series of variables that only apply to the rotating block, which are only needed for the calculations involving the rotating block. I mean, they obviously do apply to both, but they are the width of the block, the bullet offset from the center of the block, that's how far away from the pivot point it is, the rotational speed of the block after impact, and the moment of inertia of the block. Now that's... Um, basically the block's resistance to rotational change. Now, obviously we know that the height reached is the same. So SW is S and SWR are the same. So we can just refer to those as SW and use the same in both. And as a result, because it reaches the same height, that means it had to have been having the same upwards velocity. So we can get rid of VWS and VWR and replace them with VW. Okay, so going back to the um, block, we need to now basically ask, well, why does it rotate? I mean, it may, obviously this is obvious if um, to if you think about it in practice, but obviously from a physics point of view and from a theoretical point of view, we just need to look at that. So obviously we have the bullet arriving in the centre of the block and the bullet arriving at the side of the block. And in the case of the bullet that hits the centre of the block, when it hits there's a force applied on the block by the bullet and there is equally a resistive force applied by the block which in this case is its weight which is um, the mass mw times g in the case of the bullet that hits the side of the block obviously we still have this impact force but it's to the side although we can write the same arrow down in the case 
uh, that we did for the static block, we can equally write the block as being on a pivot point with each part of its weight over either s equally distributed over either side, which gives us obviously two downwards arrows over either side of the pivot point, um, which reach a half mwg, and they are a distance which is a quarter of the length of the block away from the centre. Now the result of this is that obviously if in a rotate in a, if a, is that the forces aren't balanced rotationally. You can see that prior to the impact of the bullet, you have equal rotational force, half and half on one side of the pivot point. And the moment you add the impact force of the bullet, the rotational the, the rotational forces are imbalanced, and that's what causes the block to spin. Now we need to look at how we can calculate how much energy of the bullet is absorbed by the block, basically how and how work out how far into the block that it travels. Energy is equal to force times distance. So the distance that the bullet will travel into the block um, multiplied by the force that the block exerts against the bullet penetrating it will equal the energy that is used up from the impact. So this force I'm going to call F and this force is basically um, when the energy is wasted up by the block being broken up as the bullet travels into into it. So that's where that for the, en the energy for that force comes from. And this is the effectively the lost energy in the system. So how can we work out how far it travels into the block? Well, we can use the um, equations for governing the laws of motion, which are, um, and in particular, the one which is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. This relates to how acceleration over a distance affects uh, velocity. Um, but we can rearrange, because the bit we're interested in is s, which is the distance, we can rewrite this equation to be s is equal to v squared minus u squared over 2a. So where are, what are the properties that go into this equation? Well, obviously, as I said, S is the distance that the bullet penetrates the block. V is the bullet of the the velocity of the bullet prior to impact, and U is the velocity of the bullet after impact. Now that isn't actually zero because obviously the bullet continues to go upwards with the block. And A is the deceleration of the bullet, which is obviously um, an, an unknown variable, but we can calculate it. So if we go and work out what S, V, U and A are in terms of the, ve the, the constants that I've referred to. S is in the case of the static DS and in case of the rotating DR. V is the velocity of the bullet, so that's VB and VB the same in both cases. U is, in the case of the static block, it's the velocity that the block then travels up at, which is VW. But in the case of the rotating block, it's actually going a bit faster than that because it's con it's got the velocity upwards of the block plus the rotational velocity the, the 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 rate at which it's rotating within the block and that is the angular rotation speed of the block multiplied by the offset distance from the center so that means that the speed for you for the rotating block is vw plus lo times r that just leaves us with a which as i said we we don't know, but we do know that force is equal to mass times acceleration, okay, which means that acceleration is equal to force divided by mass, which means we can substitute in the equation A for F over M, and this leads us to the acceleration or F over M being F over MB, which would be MB being the mass of the bullet in both cases. Now you're going to say we don't also we don't know F. However, as it turns out, as you'll later see that doesn't actually matter. So if we go back to the equation for working out the distance penetrates the book block, we end up with these two equations. So for the static, ds is equal to vb squared minus vw squared all over two over brackets f over mb and for the rotating block ds is equal to vb squared minus vw plus lor all squared over 2f over M mb and this can be tidied up a little bit to go and move the mass to mo mo um, because you're dividing by a mass twice that's effectively a multiplication so that can then be put uh, on the side there as being a multi uh, as being mb times the rest of the equation. Now as you will notice in the rotating side you have a little bit extra on u, u is a little bit extra and the result of this is it therefore means that vb minus the value for u is going to be a smaller value which means that because everything else in the equations are the same we know ds 
is therefore has to be less for the rotating block. Now, if we therefore put this into the equation, this therefore means the, the for energy, this therefore means that the lost energy will also be less. And as I was saying before we, about not knowing the force, well, as it turns out, as you can see, we've got F both multiplied and divided. So we can cancel both of the Fs out of the equation and lost energy is equal to to the equation seen on the screen. I'm not going to read them out because, of not, I'm, because they're quite long. So that proves that less energy is lost on the rotating block but it actually also enables us to work out the angular rotation speed based on the known variables which I thought I'd go into as well. Because the blocks travel the same height that means that the kinetic energy upwards is the same which means that therefore that the kinetic energy used to rotate the block is the difference between the lost energy in the static system and the lost energy in the rotational system which is so the rotational energy in the rotating block is equal to ES minus ER. Now rotational energy is also equal to a half of the moment of inertia times the rotational velocity squared um, and using our units that's a half IR squared. ES minus ER is a very long and complicated equation to, so I'm not going to go and explain the simplification process on screen but you're just going to take my word for it that when you do go and simplify it all out what you end up with is MB times VW times LO times R plus a half MB LO squared R squared and that's equal to the rotational energy of the block and we can actually then go and simplify all this um, by putting everything onto one side and then we end up with IR squared minus MB times LO squared times R squared minus 2 MB VWLOR is all equal to zero which if again can be simplified to this and you, what you might notice there is that that is a quadratic equation which means that we can therefore work out R using the quadratic formula with all of these um, with a, B and C all being these variables and obviously this isn't a maths video so I'm not going to go and talk about how you would solve the quadratic equation but when you do plug these into the quadratic formula and simplify what you end up with is this expression R is equal to 4 times MB times VW times LO all over 2I minus 2 times MB times LO squared and this will give you a value in radians per second for the rotational value of the block um, and it's all derived from properties that we either know or can work out so as I said like the mass of the bullet the velocity of the block after um, impact because obviously we know how high it goes so we can work out how fast it must have been traveling the offset from the center and we can work out the moment of inertia of the block from its physical properties because it's a cuboid and um, it's things like it's and it, we know its mass so we will be able to work that property out so if we go back to the original equation for the wasted energy you'll then see that all of the property all of the variables in there are variables we either know or can work out Anyway, I hope that this answers the question correctly and that I haven't just wasted a whole load of t my time doing this and made a really, really simple blunder. Um, because basically, if this isn't the explanation, the only thing that I can think is that Derek must have the force and is using it to cheat gravity.